brand new way for you to sell your car. Go to Carvana, answer a few questions, and our techno wizardry calculates your car's value and gives you a real offer in seconds. We'll come to you, pay you on the spot, then pick up your car. That's it. At Carvana. Today on Scripps News Live, time is running out for five people trapped inside the Titan. Five people in a small submersible all breathing out carbon dioxide with no ability to remove that carbon dioxide for this length of time becomes the problem. Their oxygen stores dwindling, as are the hopes of a successful rescue. Severe storms slamming the central U.S., killing four in Texas. Oh my ow! And sending seven concert goers to the hospital in Colorado. Massive natural gas explosions rocking cities in China and France. What we know right now about the cause of these blasts and the search underway beneath the rubble. Plus a police officer's quick thinking and big heart helping to save a life. I knew that a second could change the outcome and whether or not somebody was living um, or not. Scripps News Live begins right now. Now we begin right here with some breaking news in the search for a submersible that's been missing in the North Atlantic. Moments ago, the U.S. Coast Guard confirming a debris field has been found in the area where crews have been searching for the Titan. Welcome to Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Della Cruz. I want to get you right back out to Scripps News National Correspondent Stephanie Sandval, who's been covering the story for us from Boston. So, Stephanie, this new information just coming in from the Coast Guard minutes ago. Uh, what more can you tell us about what they're saying right now? Yeah, Veronica, like you just said, uh, we just got word that they did find a debris field that they're uh, now inspecting uh, an ROV. Uh, found that debris field in that search area that they uh, were looking uh, through. And now we just kind of wait and see and, 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 and uh, hear uh, back what they find out. Uh, there is a press briefing happening uh, later this afternoon at uh, starting at 3 p.m. where we will get more information. Now, uh, also, uh, maybe an hour ago, a medical team uh, did arrive at the scene of the rescue effort, bringing uh, extra oxygen, of course, just in case uh, if rescue crews are able to locate the submersible and they uh, they need to provide extra oxygen. Uh, also right now a team from France's Ocean uh, Research Institute is, is navigating its special robot along the ocean floor that ROV uh, but as of this hour it has yet to find any uh, signs of the Titan. The Victor 6000 is fitted with robotic arms that could potentially lift the Titan to the surface, uh, which would be the next biggest challenge in this operation if they do find it. The Coast Guard uh, says finding the missing vis vessel is a very complex, difficult operation uh, given the large search area. Uh, of course, they were able to narrow down the search area uh, thanks to that aircraft uh, picking up reports of repeated underwater noises first heard Tuesday night, uh, but the Coast Guard uh, saying, unfortunately, they can't confirm or uh, deny that those noises were coming from the vessel. Um, it was also reported uh, um, um, that uh, this vessel, uh, if it were to run out uh, um, of power, that it after 24 hours, it would go to the ocean surface. So it is possible that this, uh, we don't know exactly where this vessel is. It could have been in the water. It could have been on top of the water. And so this debris field is uh, a sign of hope really right now, Veronica. All right. And again, we are standing by for that press conference with the U.S. Coast Guard that is going to take place about 3 p.m. Eastern. Stephanie Sandoval tracking the very latest developments on the Titan search there from Boston. Stephanie, thank you. So the company at the center of this international search effort, Ocean Gate Expeditions, has been under the microscope since that vessel lost contact with the surface. Years of concerns about the Titan's construction and safety have come to light since it disappeared. And the ocean explorer who canceled his trip on the Titan says that he had misgivings about the dive after he saw that equipment. They still hadn't reached a depth of 300 meters, um, bearing in mind that the wreck is at 3,800. Um, then I was looking at parts of the vessels. There was um, like industrial casing was being used as ballast. Um, they got like an Xbox controller for, for steering it. Um, there's the other parts seemed off the shelf. Scripsy's national correspondent Maya Rodriguez continues our coverage now explaining why the government can't require companies like OceanGate to submit to inspections, at least not for now. 
The Titan submersible is different from other deep sea vessels. It's privately owned, so it is not formally regulated by any governmental agency. It doesn't have to meet the standards that are required for deep sea craft used by the government, like the U.S. Navy. Kind of an experimental new technology that definitely is not fully proven, you know, not fully regulated. Uh, reflected by the fact that uh, everyone who participates in the expedition has to sign a waiver and, you know, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Many private submersibles undergo extensive testing and certification, known as classing. Titan has not. OceanGate says the submersible's innovative construction of carbon fiber and titanium on the passenger hull would take years to be classed, which the company claims would get in the way of rapid innovation. But experts say Titan's innovations are what makes certification even more important. The company's former director of marine operations claimed he was fired after he raised safety concerns about Titan. OceanGate sued him, alleging he shared confidential information. The two sides settled the case in 2018. According to court papers filed in April in a U.S. district court that oversees Titanic matters, Titan had undergone 50 test dives, including to the equivalent depth of the Titanic. David Gallo is an oceanographer and a friend of passenger Paul-Henri Nargiolet. But we knew this was going to happen at some point along the way and uh, knew darn well it would, and uh, we knew all the difficulties there would be about how do you recover from that. Uh, if the sub is stuck on a shipwreck, if uh, they lose batteries, if they're caught on the bottom some other way, uh, and nothing was done about it. Maya Rodriguez, Scripps News. Again, the U.S. Coast Guard will be holding a news conference at 3 p.m. Eastern to talk about this debris field that has now been discovered in the search area. As soon as it begins, we're going to go ahead and bring it to you live again. That's in the 3 p.m. Eastern hour right here on Scripps News Live. And we have much more to come in this hour for you. India's Prime Minister arriving at the White House ahead of his address to a joint session of Congress tonight. Also, a Wall Street Journal reporter who's been wrongfully detained in Russia for 12 weeks loses another bid for his freedom. But first, the race to contain one of the most powerful technologies ever invented is on. Inside Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's plan to investigate and regulate AI. We'll have that for you next. I've been putting off getting life insurance and I'm not getting any younger. Have you been thinking about getting a life insurance plan but just keep putting it off? Was that a yes? Then this message is for you. I'm David Denowitz and I know the importance of life insurance. And that's why I'm here to tell you it's not too late to get the coverage you need. If you're between the ages of 45 and 85, you can get a policy with a benefit of up to $25,000 and rates available at $5 a week. The phone lines are now open. Just call 800-354-6059. And your acceptance is guaranteed. I have a pre-existing medical condition. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes. Can I get accepted without a medical exam? Yes. If you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down for this guaranteed acceptance life insurance regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. And rates start at just $5 a week. Remember, if you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. Nothing's more important than family. So call now, pick up the phone, and get guaranteed acceptance life insurance today. Just call 800-354-6059. I'm 72 and on a fixed income. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes, your acceptance is guaranteed and your rate can never go up for any reason. You can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's just one simple question. Are you between 45 and 85? If you answer yes, don't wait another minute. Call now. The call is absolutely free and there is no obligation to enroll. Just call 800-354-6059. That's 800-354-6059. How can a photo become a vibrant part of your home? When you go to TriFracture.com and print your images directly on glass. Get beautiful depth and clarity on a sleek, frameless print that's easy to hang and looks incredible in any space. Go to TriFracture.com now to save 20% on glass prints. 
How does Klein Inspector get among the most big verdicts and settlements of any law firm in the country? Because Klein Inspector is an award-winning team with five doctor lawyers, the most of any firm in the United States. And that's why the New York Times calls Klein Inspector a powerhouse law firm. So if a defective product, motor vehicle accident, or medical malpractice caused a catastrophic injury, call Klein Inspector. I don't get paid until next week. I got you. I'm Dave, and I can spot you up to 500 bucks of your future money instantly. Up to 500 bucks instantly? What else is in my future? A new couch. Only. Get up to 500 bucks instantly with Dave. Artificial intelligence isn't a sci-fi pipe dream anymore. The technology is real, it's powerful, and it's already impacting many of our day-to-day -day lives. In fact, employment firm Challenger Gray and Christmas has been collecting data which shows that AI has already taken close to 4,000 jobs in May alone. And that is up 20% from the month prior. And it's expected to keep climbing as more businesses look to the technology to bolster their bottom lines. The FBI is also sounding the alarm on AI's use in online sex crimes. The agency has issued a bulletin warning that more people are coming forward to report they're being extorted with sexually explicit images. But these are images that have been realistically rendered from innocent photos with AI technology. Now, the race is on in Washington to contain one of the most powerful technologies ever invented, but it's safe to say that it's gotten a major head start. And that's why Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has announced a broad plan to investigate and then eventually regulate AI. Let's get you live right now to Washington, where Scripps News National Political Correspondent Kevin Cirilli has been standing by for us. So, Kevin, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer admits that the knowledge base here for artificial intelligence is still low, given that it's new technology. So they are basically starting from scratch here. So how are they going about this? I know that the EU just passed regulation on this. Are they looking to Europe on this? Yes, they are. And experts in artificial intelligence say that the European Union has been one of the leading government bodies worldwide in reining in artificial intelligence to channel it for innovation as opposed to some destruction. And if you take a look at a recent Yale survey of top CEOs, they just came out with this several weeks ago that found that 42 percent of CEOs surveyed are apprehensive that artificial intelligence could destroy humanity within the next five to ten years. And this is all more the reason why Washington is finally waking up. Washington is putting a new focus on the rise of artificial intelligence. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said in a speech on Tuesday that lawmakers must act now to regulate AI or risk catastrophic results. Some experts predict that in just a few years, the world could be wholly rec unrecognizable from the one we live in today. That's what AI is, world-altering. We have no choice, no choice, but to acknowledge that AI's changes are coming and in many cases are already here. We ignore them at our own peril. Many want to ignore AI because it's so complex. But with AI, we cannot be ostriches sticking our heads in the sand. President Biden traveled to San Francisco earlier this week to meet with top AI officials. As I've said before, we'll see more technological change in the next 10 years than we've seen in the last 50 years, and maybe even beyond that. Last year, President Biden unveiled a blueprint for an artificial intelligence bill of rights he says that any regulations should work to guarantee safe and effective AI systems, protections from discrimination, data privacy, opt-out options, and transparent notices and explanations. This month alone, a bipartisan group of lawmakers have put forth two separate proposals relating to artificial intelligence. One proposal, backed by Senators Michael Bennett, Todd Young, and Mark Warner, would create an Office of Global Competition Analysis to better understand how the U.S. competes in AI against other countries like China. The other legislation, backed by Homeland Security Chairman Gary Peters, Senators Mike Braun and James Lankford, would require the government agencies to be transparent with Americans when utilizing artificial intelligence. Put simply, the government under this proposal must disclose when Americans are talking to a human 
or a robot. And, and that's uh, why Dr. Arid Frankel, an to, expert um, in AI and really geopolitics a who spearheads the American Leadership Initiative in Washington, says that policymakers are right to study AI's impacts. I think it's absolutely critical. Um, at this point, uh, we really have no AI governance framework. Uh, we don't even have a governance framework for digital technology more broadly. We don't even have a federal privacy uh, regulation. It's not all doom and gloom when it comes to artificial intelligence. And in fact, Dr. Frankel pointed that U.S. innovation traditionally has always been an asset to not just U.S. economic growth, but also to U.S. national security. Artificial intelligence, uh, from the U.S. perspective, the U.S. still has an edge against uh, competitors like China, for example, in the area of artificial intelligence. And it's also helped to fuel a lot of positive growth in the health community for trying to diagnose cancer and cancer prevention. And then finally, McKinsey estimates that there could be anywhere from 2.6 to 4.4 trillion dollars added to global GDP as a result of generative AI per year. And I don't know if you caught this, Veronica, but the Grammys just came out. The Grammys, it's not just Wall Street and Washington, it's also Hollywood. They said that uh, uh, AI cannot win a Grammy award for music. So Hollywood's having to take a look at this thing too. Yeah, you're right about that. It's also the central focus of the writer's strike right now uh, because writers are pushing yep. back and saying that they don't want those scripts to be generated by artificial intelligence. So we're going to have to see how this impacts, uh, you know, not just the entertainment industry, but others as well. Kevin's really live for us on Capitol Hill. Kevin, always appreciate it. Thank you. So in the meantime, some startling numbers are out when it comes to education. 13-year-olds in America getting some of the lowest test scores in decades. According to the National Assessment of Educational Progress, math scores are at their lowest since 1990. Reading is at its lowest since 2004. While performance decreased across all races, black, Native American, and low-income students saw the biggest drops in math. Joining me now live is Michael Petrilli. He is the president of the Thomas B. Fordham Institute, also a research fellow at Stanford University's Hoover Institution. Michael, thank you so much for being with us. You and I have had this discussion before, but now we're seeing test scores in reading and math fall to their lowest levels for 13-year-olds in more than a decade. Are you surprised by these numbers? Unfortunately, I'm not surprised by these numbers. Uh, we knew that the pandemic was a terrible experience for our young people, academically, socially, emotionally, otherwise. This continues a trend of test scores that we've seen since the pandemic that are just devastating. I think what is somewhat surprising and really concerning is that there's no sign of a bounce back yet. Uh, you know, these tests were given last fall. Uh, the kids that took these tests have now been back to school for at least a year, in some cases a year and a half, uh, and we are still seeing terrible, terrible results, as you said, especially for the lowest achieving kids, low income, black, Hispanic students. I think we have to take a hard look at them in the mirror and ask ourselves as a country uh, what we're doing here. Uh, you know, we're, I, I haven't heard a whole lot of talk about this educational crisis that's going on. It is a crisis just as much as the other big issues that people talk about. Uh, and we need national leadership and we need it now. So you're saying we need national leadership because this is a crisis and that test scores were falling even before the pandemic. Um, what about other countries? How are students faring in other countries right now? Are test scores in reading and math for the same age group similar? You know, we do see some declines in other countries. I don't think other countries have as much information as we do, but where we've got information, yes, we see declines. I think what we have to keep in mind though, as you said, was that this started even before the pandemic. Uh, we have now seen either flat or declining test scores for at least a decade. So that was way before the pandemic. Uh, there's a huge controversy about why that might be. We honestly do not know for sure. Uh, it could be an overhang from the Great Recession going way back to, to then. You think about what happened to the kids when they were little. Uh, could be some school funding cuts that happened uh, back 10 years ago. But again, through most of the 2010s, you know, the economy was improving. Things were getting better as a country, and yet we saw these big declines. You know, I, I've got to wonder, we, we've certainly had a conversation recently uh, about teenage mental health, which also started to decline before the pandemic. A lot of people looking at phones and social media as a potential cause of that. Perhaps uh, the phones and social media are to blame here, too. You know, we know that teenagers in particular are getting a lot less sleep than they used to. 
That could have an impact on student achievement. So look, we, we need an all of society approach here. We've got to make sure our schools are doing everything they can to help kids catch up. Uh, but we've also got to make sure that the other institutions in our society and frankly, us parents are doing what we need to do to get our kids to bed, off the phones, you know, off the screens, uh, you know, back to the books. And it makes you question what this is going to do to the future of this country. We were just speaking with our reporter in Washington. We know that lawmakers have been in Washington this week looking at how to regulate artificial intelligence. Michael, how much of an impact do you think that AI is going to have on the future of our children, especially when it comes to finding jobs and pursuing careers? Yeah, look, it could have a huge impact. I, I think none of us know for sure, but we all worry that uh, that a lot of even good paying jobs, college educated jobs could go away because of AI. Uh, but if AI is like other technology, we also know that the students who are best prepared, who have done well in school, who are able to go on and get some sort of higher education, some specialized training will likely do better. They'll be able to use the AI uh, to augment what they do on the workplace to be even more effective. Uh, and the kids without those skills, the young people without those skills, are likely to fall further behind. So, you know, we've got a lot of reasons uh, to get serious about this problem. It's a five alarm fire. Uh, you know, uh, on the one hand, the dropping test scores. On the other hand, challenges like AI coming at us. Uh, and we need to do better. You know, we have sent hundreds of billions of dollars to our schools in the wake of the pandemic, understandably, to help kids make it through that crisis and then start to catch up. If that's having an impact, we are not seeing it yet. So I hope every school board in the country, every uh, principal, uh, parents, PTAs, we've all got to put our heads together and say, are we doing enough? At the national level, the answer is clearly no, we're not. And Michael, I have 30 seconds right here, but on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate the public education system in America right now? Oh, I, I mean, I think it's at about a two, okay? And that's not because of the people in the system great people in the system. This system has been fundamentally broken for a long time. It's, it's hard to make change in it. And you look at these results and you say, we are going backwards. And this is new. You know, there was a time, decades in the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, when we were making progress, big progress. Now we're going backwards and we've got to ask ourselves, why is that? We've got to fix it. All right. Michael Petrelli is the president of the Thomas B. Fordham Institute. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, gas explosions rocking cities in China and France. We know right now about the causes behind these blasts and the surges underway beneath the rubble. We'll be right back. I was having problems with my legs and my feet. I suffered a lot of cramps, swelling. I would dread going up and down steps. Tingling in my legs due to circulation issues. The, the aches and pains uh, have just continued to increase. Did you know if you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or are over 40, your leg aches and pains could be from poor circulation? Revitive can help reduce leg aches and pains, swelling, and cramps. Revitive uses breakthrough technology to get your calf muscles pumping like a second heart to increase blood flow, reducing leg aches and pains, cramps, or swollen feet and ankles. Plus, it's drug-free. The cramping was terrible, and I don't get that anymore. Thank you, Revitive. Revitive is FDA cleared and clinically proven to increase oxygen-rich blood flow during use. The smart stimulation works so well, over 3 million people use Revitive. As a firefighter, I'm constantly on my feet. I wish I had known about Revitive a lot earlier. Um, it would have made a huge difference in really who I am today. Revitive has given me a better quality of life because I am living without Revitive reduces leg pains two times more than exercise alone in just six weeks. We want to take walks. We want to do more social activities. Just the typical things in life that I did not feel well enough before Revitive that I was able to do. Yeah, Revitive is regenerizing my legs and making me feel like let's do more. Go to Revitive.com now to learn how Revitive can help reduce leg aches and pains, swelling, and cramps. The doctor said, go for it. And I'm in the best shape in terms of my legs and my ankles and my feet than I've ever been. Try Revitive. You will see the difference. It works. It worked for me. Get the most out of life with Revitive. Visit Revitive.com. That's R-E-V-I-T-I-V-E.com. Or call 1-800-317-6641. That's 1-800-317-6641 today. Or visit Revitive.com. Order now. We're worthy. We get you more for your jewelry. You send us your item. We professionally clean and photograph it. Then we'll work with you to set your reserve price. 
and you get paid up to three times more. You're worthy of more. Get started at worthy.com. Do you have a box of videotapes, film reels, or photos that are degrading? Legacy Box professionally converts them to DVDs, thumb drive, or the cloud. Legacy Box is simple and safe with over a million satisfied customers. Visit LegacyBox.com. There's a better way to begin your mornings. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Rush. Thanks so much for being with us. Context and conversation. There's a new study that might make you feel a little bit better. Okay. okay. Just listen to this. On the stories that will shape each day. Here with us now is meteorologist Scott Withers. You got just wave after wave after wave. So you can get on with yours. Make sure you stay with us as we monitor this developing story. Morning Rush. Weekday morning starting at 7, 6 central. Only on Scripps News. Happening now, President Biden meeting with India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the White House right now. Modi received a red carpet welcome this morning. The White House wants to strengthen ties with Modi in India. Vice President Kamala Harris and the Secretaries of State and Defense were also there to greet the Prime Minister. The Indian Prime Minister met with business leaders and educators in New York City prior to leaving for the nation's capital. Democratic Senator Mark Warner of Virginia says it's important to forge ties between the U.S. and India to offset tensions with China in the same region. We're two nations that I think have moved from you know, a okay relationship, but still that needed a lot of improvements, to one that is, you know, I think, again, it's one of the most critical geopolitical, economic, and people-to-people -people relationships uh, that we have this century. Here's a look at what's ahead for Prime Minister Modi at 1245 p.m. Eastern. He and President Biden are scheduled to give remarks and then take questions from the media at the White House. We're going to bring that to you live as soon as it happens. Also, 630 p.m. Eastern tonight, President Biden and the First Lady will be hosting the Prime Minister at a state dinner. The U.S. Ambassador to Russia says she is disappointed by a court decision in the meantime to keep a Wall Street journalist in jail until at least late August. Russia is accusing 31-year-old Evan Gershkovich of espionage. Gershkovich looked tense and paced inside a glass defendant's cage before the ruling today. Ambassador Lynn Tracy called it, quote, hostage diplomacy and expressed frustration that she hadn't been able to speak with him. Failing to comply with its obligations under the consular convention in force between our two countries, Russia has denied the U.S. Embassy's requests uh, for formal consular access on three occasions since I last visited Evan in April. Gershkovich's parents were in the courtroom. The journalist is housed at a Moscow prison known for its harsh conditions. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, severe weather striking overnight in the central U.S. What we know right now about the tornado being blamed for four deaths in the northern part of Texas. And a quick reminder right here, we'd like to hear from you. You can give us a call on our Scripps News viewer hotline, toll free, 1-833-4-SCRIPS. And we will be right back. There's a new victim of identity theft every three seconds. And checking your credit score or bank statements may not be enough to alert you. That's because identity threats appear in more places than you realize. Identity thieves can use your information to open loans, transfer home titles, even commit crimes. Someone stole my information and tried to buy a car in my name. LifeLock monitors for threats to your identity, including ones you may miss, and alerts you if there's an issue. And if you're a victim, your dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. If something happens, you have somebody fighting for you. All plans backed by LifeLock's million-dollar protection package, including reimbursement for stolen funds. I know LifeLock has me covered. LifeLock. Identity theft protection starts here. Call the number on your screen or visit LifeLock.com 25 now and use promo code 25 now to save 25% on your first year of identity theft protection. Enroll now. At Omaha Steaks, we do burgers differently. We take a premium aged steak like this and turn it into a pure ground burger like this. So this is actually a ribeye. This is a New York strip, top sirloin, beef brisket, and this, this is a filet mignon. For a limited time, our Burger Perfection flight comes with 20 big, juicy burgers, all for just $79.99, plus free shipping. Get it today at omahasteaks.com slash TV. This is Burger Perfection, guaranteed. 
How does Klein Inspector get among the most big verdicts and settlements of any law firm in the country? Because Klein Inspector is an award-winning team with five doctor lawyers, the most of any firm in the United States. And that's why the New York Times calls Klein Inspector a powerhouse law firm. So if a defective product, motor vehicle accident, or medical malpractice caused a catastrophic injury, call Klein Inspector. Hey there, welcome back to Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Thank you so much for being with us on this Thursday. Let's get you up to speed right now. The biggest story that we're tracking for you at this hour some breaking news in the search for that missing submersible vessel. In the last hour or so, the U.S. Coast Guard confirming a debris field has been spotted in the search area near the Titanic wreckage. Crews have been frantically searching for this submersible with five men on board since Sunday. Those men paying as much as $250,000 to view remains of the Titanic, which sank off the coast of Newfoundland in 1912. We're still awaiting more details right now about the debris field. We're going to bring them to you as soon as we get them right here on Scripps News Live. And developing now cleanup underway in North Texas after the second deadly tornado outbreak in a week. This is just some of the damage left behind in the town of Matador, where officials confirmed four people were killed, another 10 were injured. The National Weather Service blaming a rare, dangerous combination of weather conditions, including tornadoes, hurricane force winds, and softball sized hail. Concert goers at the famous Red Rock Amphitheater in Colorado were forced to run for shelter last night after massive chunks of hail hammered down on the venue during a Lewis Tomlinson concert. Scripps News Denver is reporting seven people were taken to the hospital and an estimated 90 others were treated for injuries on the scene. And the threat of severe weather for Colorado and neighboring states is not over today. Another round of strong storms is expected to strike the Oklahoma and Texas panhandle. Scripps News meteorologist Scott Withers has the very latest on the storm track for us. A late night tornado caused widespread damage in a small Texas town. Rescue efforts are ongoing for people possibly trapped by debris. That twister devastated the town of Matador was one of three that roared through the Texas panhandle. National Weather Service right there confirms a tornado hit that small town. Just 600 people. This is outside of Lubbock. City officials say a large part of the community just gone. At least four people were killed. The storm system also dropped softball sized hail and packed 100 mile per hour wind gust. Powerful storm. Listen to that hitting during a live Louis Tomlinson concert. This is at the outdoor amphitheater near Denver. The heavy rains causing flash flooding inside the amphitheater. The water gushing. You see it right down the stairs there. Concert goers. They had to run for safety. Watch this. Seven people were injured as they were rushing out. They had to be taken to the hospital. Another 90 were injured, including broken bones and cuts. And it wasn't just the rain. The storm pelted people with ping pong ball sized hail. Now on the national satellite, you can see here's that system right there. That's what dropped those tornadoes in the panhandle of Texas. Now that's moving towards central and eastern Texas and then going down towards the Houston area. And we got more strong storms today all along up and down the east coast, moving from basically Atlanta all the way up through the mid Atlantic and another powerful system out here in Colorado, just east of Denver. We've got some flash flood warnings and watches there going all the way over into Kansas. And that's where we see our severe weather alerts for today. Strong storms expected from the Wyoming area down through eastern Colorado and into the three corners. That's New Mexico and you can see there the Oklahoma and Texas panhandles. The excessive heat warnings not as bad today. That's good news in Texas, mostly focused around Corpus Christi west of the Rio Grande. Now the rest of the state though is still under those heat advisories in the orange and in the upper Midwest we got air quality issues again. The heat that some of that Canadian smoke ground ozone problems areas up there. It looks like those storms across the high plains could spin up a few tornadoes and even more damage damaging hail today. All right, Scotty, thank you for that. So the summer months have arrived and with it, so has an enhanced risk of severe weather. But a recent Scripps News investigation found critical warning systems have been out of date. And in some cases, they haven't even been working at all when people have needed them most. Investigative correspondent Patrick Terpstra spoke with a member of Congress on a committee tasked with making sure that the country is prepared. Our Scripps News investigation uncovered problems with tornado siren warning systems in communities across America. 
Now we're learning about some of the steep challenges towns face when they try to do something about it. When you don't have cell devices, when you don't have cell service, you need to rely on those 50-year-old sirens. I think they're critical. That's uh, Congressman Anthony D'Esposito responding to our Scripps News investigation that found outdoor warning sirens failing in communities across the country. It's got to be concerning. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's concerning. D'Esposito leads a subcommittee in Congress that oversees national emergency preparedness. There are many communities throughout this nation that I'm sure depend on the old school notification sirens. As I've seen firsthand, that at one point could be your only source of notification. Our Scripps News investigation identified 24 incidents since 2019 when sirens didn't go off during testing or worse, in severe weather. The tornado has just gone all the way to the ground now. It's we even saw sirens located in the heart of Oklahoma's Tornado Alley that are now too antiquated to function properly. How old is the siren that we're looking at? That was put in in about 1973. In Hennessy, Oklahoma, the town had to come up with a makeshift fix to get the sirens to still work with obsolete copper wiring. Well, should we go for it? Sure. About 600 miles away in Rolling Fork, Mississippi, our investigation found cost was the reason this town hadn't replaced its outdated sirens before a deadly tornado hit earlier this year, killing 13 people. But when you're operating with limited funds, you have to use what you can. A dispatcher showed us how they used a keypad from the 1980s to manually fire up the alarms. Rolling Fork's two sirens didn't go off right away the night the tornado tore through this town if they went off at all. D'Esposito says stories like that are frustrating because there are federal grants available to help rural communities get new automated siren systems. But many towns across the U.S. may simply not know about them. They don't have the time or the resources to hunt down these grants and say, all right, how do we write these? What are the benchmarks that we need to, to meet? We're going to look at this in an aggressive manner and, and make sure that we get the information out. But just knowing about those grants is only part of the challenge. Our investigation discovered towns still have to fight for a limited amount of federal funding, and the competition is intense. In 2022, about 800 jurisdictions applied for $4.6 billion worth of grants. That was twice as much as the $2.3 billion available. There are still other hurdles. Our investigation also found there are no national guidelines for how sirens should be installed, maintained, tested, and replaced. That's despite long-standing calls from the Commerce Department's National Institute of Standards and Technology for the development of national codes and standards for outdoor sirens. Should there be national standards for sirens so that communities know how to use them and so that people know how to recognize them when they, they go off? Listen, I, I don't see a problem with uh, standardization of the sirens. It would also avoid the situations that so many communities face where they say, oh man, this thing doesn't even work. FEMA declined to make someone available to talk to us about national standards but in a written statement, they seem to place responsibility largely on local communities. Each community and their needs can be different, they wrote, and local officials there help determine what their risks are and ways to help. D'Esposito tells us his subcommittee has been planning a top-to-bottom review of FEMA. Uh, maybe not an overhaul, but more of a check-in. He plans to examine whether FEMA could do a better job helping communities alert people when disasters are imminent. In the end, sometimes that old school technology is exactly what we need in the, in the face of a disaster. Sounds like something you're going to be working on. Absolutely. Once a community decides that they do want to upgrade or repair those old sirens, there can be a long wait. Delays to get parts and the microchip shortage has also affected the installation of new sirens. Patrick Terps for Scripps News, Washington. We're following new developments for you in two explosions, a restaurant explosion in China that killed dozens of people and another blast that crumpled the facade of a building on the left bank in Paris. And we begin right here in northwestern China, where 31 people died, seven others were injured in a gas explosion at a barbecue restaurant. Two restaurant workers told authorities that they smelled gas about an hour before that explosion and then found the valve on a liquefied gas tank had been broken. 
A new one was being installed when the explosion occurred. Police detained nine people, including the restaurant's owner. Their assets were frozen. And now to Paris, France. Authorities there not quite ruling out a gas leak. One person is feared missing and more than 30 people have been injured. Four of them critically. That explosion destroying the front of a building that housed a private academy of design and arts. Witnesses say that there was a strong odor of gas before the blast occurred. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, House lawmakers getting heated after a vote to censure Congressman Adam Schiff. On this vote, the A's are 213 and the nays are 209. With six answering present, the resolution adopted. Without objection, the motion to consider is laid on the table. What this censure means right now and why Congressman Schiff is calling it, quote, a badge of honor. Plus, Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert's attempt to bring articles of impeachment against President Biden have stalled, at least for now. We'll have the details. Also, here's a look at our primetime lineup for you tonight. Del Walters is at 6, 5 Central with the debrief. And then on Scripps News tonight with Christian Bryant and Chance Seals, correspondent Maurice Giorgio is going to bring us this special investigation. It's been almost four years since the stunning news of Jeffrey Epstein's death. We put our faith in the justice system. They're not going to be able to commit suicide. I worry about the integrity of the process at this point. Not that difficult. You have cameras. Make sure that they're working. There's no justification for three and a half years to go by investigating one incident. Do you feel confident we will learn the truth? Scripps News investigates. Delayed justice tonight at 8, 7 central on Scripps News Tonight. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong. 20% thicker than average and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait, you've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Get customizable furniture at joybird.com that complements your art, your green thumb, or just you. Plus, buy now and pay over time with a firm at joybird.com. Subscribe today. Sure, you should teach them to ride a bike. Then use Greenlight and teach them how to invest in bikes. Teach them to be smart about money and he'll go far. Super far. Cool. Oh, hey, Mom. Navigate the world of money together. Invest in your best investment. Greenlight. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then, Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at Worthy.com. At Rulala, feel like a million bucks without paying the price. Seize the deals on top names before they're gone. Get in to never miss out. Shop Rulala.com today. There's no justification for three and a half years to go by investigating one incident. Do you feel confident we will learn the truth? Scripps News investigates delayed justice tonight at 8, 7 central on Scripps News Tonight. Congressman Adam Schiff is now the 25th House lawmaker to be censured. 
House Republicans passed the resolution along party lines yesterday, and they are accusing Schiff of abusing his power by saying there was evidence of collusion between then-President Trump and Russia in the 2016 election. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy struggled to read the censure resolution as Democrats shouted him down. On this vote, the A's are 213 and the nays are 209. With six answering present, the resolution adopted. Without objection, the motion to consider is relayed on the table. The House will be in order. Schiff was one of former President Trump's most outspoken critics. And there you see Kevin McCarthy. He is reading the vote, which we now know passed narrowly. Uh, but, of course, we're going to have uh, much more on this story coming up in the next hour. Well, look, it's a badge of honor. As Roosevelt said in his time, sometimes you can judge a person by the enemies they make. Uh, and this was a MAGA resolution uh, that Donald Trump threatened if any Republican voted against, as many had last week, uh, that they would be uh, subject to a primary challenge. Uh, so this is basically Trump and MAGA world going after someone they think is effective in standing up to them. Now, just in case you're wondering, a censure is less severe than an expulsion. It's really just a formal disapproval of a lawmaker's conduct. In an effort to bring articles of impeachment against President Biden, that effort stalling for now. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy delaying the vote that was scheduled for today, and he did so by negotiating a deal with GOP Congresswoman Lauren Boebert. She introduced the impeachment resolution over the president's handling of the southern border. Part of their deal includes the resolution to go under a House committee review. McCarthy believes that legislation as consequential as this must go through the traditional process. And I think to, to prematurely bring something up like that, to have no background in it, it, it undercuts what we're doing in Comer's um, committee. We're finding something new every single day, what we're doing in Jim Jordan's committee as well. Look, this is probably one of the most important um, things members of Congress has a right to do. Representative Boebert introduced the impeachment resolution through a process known as, quote, a privilege resolution, which allows lawmakers to bypass House leadership to get bills to the floor. In the meantime, the Senate Judiciary Committee is planning to vote on an ethics bill for Supreme Court justices. Senator Dick Durbin says the committee will hold a vote in July, and it comes in the wake of a recent ProPublica report on Justice Samuel Alito accepting a luxury trip from political donor Paul Singer and not disclosing it. ProPublica also reporting that Justice Alito didn't recuse himself from cases involving Singer. Now, these revelations have been fueling other ethical concerns for the nation's highest court. Scripps News correspondent Maura Sirani has more on the efforts to establish a code of conduct for justices. A lot of talk about this topic lately. Justice Alito is the latest justice to respond to such claims, and he is defending his actions. So according to a new report from ProPublica, conservative billionaire hedge fund manager Paul Singer chartered a private jet to fly Justice Alito to Alaska for a luxury fishing trip. This was back in 2008, a chartered plane that could have cost around a $100,000 one way. Now, the report states both men stayed at the King Salmon, that is a luxury lodge that costs more than $1,000 a night, but Justice Alito didn't report this trip in his uh, financial disclosures that year. Now, in the years following that trip, the report states Singer's hedge fund was involved in at least 10 cases before the Supreme Court, but Alito didn't recuse himself from those. Now, when asked for comment by ProPublica about this story, Justice Alito didn't reply. Instead, kind of an odd move here, he wrote an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal published even before the ProPublica report was even released hours before. Now, in that op-ed, Alito denies he was obligated to report the fishing trip, saying he accepted the private flight chartered by Singer and then sat in a seat that would have otherwise been unoccupied. He also said um, he was not required to recuse himself in any of those cases involving Singer's company. Now, this, of course, comes as we've reported just a few weeks after uh, that Daily Wire report that Justice Sonia Sotomayor received more than a million dollars from book publisher Penguin Random House for her book in 2010, didn't recuse herself from cases involving that company. And then, of course, earlier this year, ProPublica um, reporting that Justice Clarence Thomas had been accepting luxury travel really for years without disclosing it. Democrats called for him to step down and for Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts to institute a code of ethics. Senate Judiciary Chair Dick Durbin saying again this week, enough is enough. 
We've waited, we've prepared, we've uh, asked for information, and we're moving forward. When we return from the July recess, we will have a markup of the Supreme Court ethics bill in the Senate Judiciary Committee. I hope before that time, Chief Justice Roberts will take the lead and show some leadership and bring Supreme Court ethics to the standard it should be. There is no reason why the highest court in our land should have the lowest ethics in our government. Last month, the Judicial Conference began requiring justices to report things like travel accommodations and gifts received from anyone other than a family member. Mara Sirianni, Scripps News, Atlanta. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, an officer responding to a life or death situation with just seconds to spare. I knew that a second could change the outcome and whether or not somebody was living um, or not. When we come back, we're going to take a closer look at the heroic rescue on the roof of a condo building. Also, a fiery nightmare ending when some brave New York firefighters step in to help. We're going to explain after this. Are you ready for a fresh new bath or shower? Well, now is the best time with 50% off installation and no interest and no payments for one year. Hi, I'm Christina, and it's time to flip your old worn out bath or shower with Jacuzzi Bath Remodel today. Everyone knows the Jacuzzi brand. They're the most trusted name in water for over 60 years. But did you know they can install a gorgeous bath or shower that feels incredible in as little as one day? It's no stress and no mess with a lifetime warranty. Now let's talk beauty. You deserve to start and end your day in a beautiful space that feels great and is custom designed just for you. So call or go online now to see the Christina preferred designs like Canyon, Farm, and Urban. Now that's a total bathroom beauty that I love at a price you can afford. And how about safety? Like an ultra low profile, easy entry shower complete with grab bars and a custom design seat. You deserve safety and peace of mind without sacrificing style. Because with all the worries in daily life, taking a shower shouldn't be one of them. Every time I stepped over my old tub, I worried I might fall. I don't have those fears anymore. Jacuzzi bath remodel gave me a gorgeous shower that's safe too. I've been trying to get him to remodel that bath for years. I called and they didn't just one day. And at a price we could afford. With one call to Jacuzzi Bath Remodel, you can effortlessly transform that old, ugly eyesore into the stunning bath or shower of your dreams that you'll love for years to come. Call or go online now to jacuzzibathremodel.com to get 50% off installation. Plus, ask how you may qualify for no interest and no payments for 12 months. And when you call right now, we'll give you our complete safety upgrade for free. Go to jacuzzibathremodel.com or call 800-218-1279. That's 800-218-1279. Call now. <sighs> Can't afford this. Yeah, you can. Who are you? I'm you from the future, and I just got paid. And I'm Dave. I can get you up to 500 bucks of your future money now. 500 bucks instantly? Instantly. <laughs> awesome. And why are we naked? Oh, uh, after this, you're gonna check into a nudist resort. They have free Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm, and volleyball. <laughs> Cool. Download Dave and get up to 500 bucks instantly. No interest, no credit check. Carvana has hundreds of thousands of five-star reviews and counting. The whole process was really simple and easy. And this is my third time selling to Carvana. You just enter your license plate or your VIN, answer a few questions, boom, you get a real off. Sell your car to Carvana today. One year since the end of Roe versus Wade. Look at what's changed. What exactly does it mean to have the life of the mother at risk? Abortion in America. Friday night at 8, 7 central on Scripps News. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Della Cruz. Take a look at this. Some cell phone video capturing a dramatic rescue on top of a burning apartment in Brooklyn, New York. Look at this video. Officials saying that the victim had no access to the fire escape. Witnesses heard him yelling for help as he stood on that windowsill. Firefighters eventually used a rope to lower him to safety. Now the victim was treated for non life threatening injuries and fire marshals are still investigating what sparked the blaze and some tense moments on the roof of a condo building which could have led to tragedy. 
but with just seconds to make a decision, an officer saved a life. Stephanie Suskin with Scripps News West Palm Beach sat down with this officer who wants others to know that someone is out there and is always willing to help. I felt like on Sunday, me being there was meant to be. A somewhat routine call, a welfare check, turned into one of the most high stakes calls Sergeant Kendall Reyes has ever experienced in her 15 year career with Palm Beach Police. There's nothing higher than a life or death situation, and that's what we were dealing with. She and her team responded to check on a woman pacing the roof of a condo building six stories high. Reyes soon realized the woman in her 60s was prepared to jump. She observed me and she said, no, 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 stay away, and went towards the ledge again. Close to 30 minutes went by of tense negotiations. You're having a rough day. We all have rough days. Reyes relying on her crisis intervention training to try to communicate with the woman, but she wasn't backing away from the ledge. So it was a very volatile situation, and I was trying to control it as best as I could, and I knew that a second could change the outcome and whether or not somebody was living um, or not. Then a shift and the break Reyes knew she needed. Papers the woman was holding blew away in the wind and her attention and gaze shifted. Um, at that moment, I knew she w things were escalating quicker than I could you know, talk to her about to try and you know, deter her from, from taking this action. And I called out her name and I made a loud noise and she didn't turn around and I knew that that was my second that I had to sprint towards her and try and, and remove her from the ledge. My primary concern and goal was just to save her. Honestly, um, that, that was my concern. I had no concern for myself in that aspect. I just wanted to save her. And she did. The other officers on scene raced in and the woman was taken to the hospital. I'm so grateful that things went the way that they did and that, you know, she's safe and that she's getting the treatment that she needs. Reyes hopes if you take anything away from this story, it's that you are never alone and there is always someone willing to help. It just might be the person behind the badge. And the results of saving a human life, I, I mean, there's, there's nothing better than that at the end of the day. That's honestly part of the reason I'd like to think most police officers put on the uniform is that you know you're going to rise to that occasion to save somebody if you get the opportunity to. And honestly, Sunday just justified why I do this job. I do this job to help people. Stephanie Suskind, Scripps News. Now, if you or someone you know is considering suicide, please call or text the National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline at the number on your screen. It's 988. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, our coverage of the search for a submersible vessel missing in the Atlantic right now continues. Just minutes before noon, the U.S. Coast Guard confirming that a debris field has been found in the area where crews have been searching now for five days. Again, we expect to learn more at a news conference straight ahead at 3 p.m. Eastern. We're going to have a live report for you from the U.S. Coast Guard's Command Center for the Search in Boston. That's coming up next. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Thank you so much for watching Scripps News Live. We're going to have way more coverage as soon as we come back. We're back after a short break. I've been putting off getting life insurance, and I'm not getting any younger. Have you been thinking about getting a life insurance plan, but just keep putting it off? Was that a yes? then this message is for you. I'm David Denowitz, and I know the importance of life insurance. And that's why I'm here to tell you it's not too late to get the coverage you need. If you're between the ages of 45 and 85, you can get a policy with a benefit of up to $25,000 and rates available at $5 a week. The phone lines are now open. Just call 800-354-6059. And your acceptance is guaranteed. I have a pre-existing medical condition. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes. Can I get accepted without a medical exam? Yes. If you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down for this guaranteed acceptance life insurance regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. And rates start at just $5 a week. Remember, if you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. Nothing's more important than family. So call now, pick up the phone, and get guaranteed acceptance life insurance today. 
Just call 800-354-6059. I'm 72 and on a fixed income. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes, your acceptance is guaranteed and your rate can never go up for any reason. You can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's just one simple question. Are you between 45 and 85? If you answered yes, don't wait another minute. Call now. The call is absolutely free and there is no obligation to enroll. Just call 800-354-6059. That's 800-354-6059. We are very aware of the time sensitivity around this mission. We remain focused on contributing to the search for the Titan crew and continue to hold out hope that they will be located and brought home safely. We're following some breaking news right now as hope dwindles in the search for a missing submersible. Within the past hour, the U.S. Coast Guard revealing a debris field has been found in the search area on the bottom of the ocean. Thank you so much for staying with us on this Thursday afternoon. It is now 1 p.m. in the east and 10 a.m. out west. I'm Veronica De La Cruz. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. I want to get you right out to Scripps News correspondent Philip Crowther, who's been covering this breaking situation for us. So, Philip, we know at this point that rescuers have found this debris field. Uh, tell us more about what's in it and where it's located. Well, most of that information will hopefully come from the U.S. Coast Guard when it gives its press update here. That'll be at 3 p.m. here Eastern time, because what we're working with right now is very little, essentially just a tweet and a press release sent out by the Coast Guard that says that a debris field was indeed found near the Titanic wreck, meaning that that would be uh, um, a long way beneath the surface of the Atlantic Ocean. And of course, precisely that area that those five men on board the submersible wanted to visit in the first place. The results thereof are now being examined by experts, says the U.S. Coast Guard. It also has a few details as to how this debris field was found. It was an ROV, a remotely operated vehicle, essentially an underwater drone that found it. This was a U.S. ROV uh, that was launched from a Canadian vessel, the Horizon Arctic, uh, that was one of those many ships that are part of that rescue mission in this remote part uh, of the Atlantic Ocean. And this, of course, comes at a time of... uh, Uh, of increased seriousness uh, in this search effort because today is the day that in theory at least that uh, supply of 96 hours of oxygen runs out for those five men on board uh, that vessel if indeed it is still intact the discovery of a debris field puts that into question but official answers we won't won't be getting those uh, for a few hours now in two hours time we'll be hearing from the u.s coast guard here in boston And Philip, because those oxygen stores are running quite low, like you just mentioned, has the rescue mission turned into a recovery effort? What are officials saying right now? Yeah, not yet, not officially. Uh, That is something that most likely the Coast Guard will be deciding and will be making official, maybe not as early as today, except, of course, if that, that debris field can be examined quickly and those can be detected as being parts of the Titan submersible, maybe that can be done uh, in the next uh, few hours. In that case, it most likely will officially turn into a recovery mission. But the U.S. Coast Guard, until yesterday in its last press conference, was still saying with a degree of optimism and a glimmer of hope that this was still uh, a search and rescue mission. But that might very well uh, change within the next few hours. All right, Philip Crowther live in Boston. We'll be circling back with you, Philip. Thank you. Again, the U.S. Coast Guard will be holding a news conference at 3 p.m. Eastern to talk about this debris field that has now been discovered in the search area. As soon as that press conference begins, we'll bring it to you live. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been in Washington for what is going to be a busy day and evening. The leader of what's now the most populous country in the world meeting with the president and first lady late yesterday. And he returned to the White House today. There are certainly many areas of discussion and concern. India is an important relationship for the U.S. in South Asia. Congressional correspondent Nathander Reid live for us right now on Capitol Hill. So, Nate, as we wait for this joint press conference to begin, what has the message been like so far from the White House in terms of this meeting? 
Well, from President Biden, especially at the arrival ceremony earlier today, he projected a message of the similarities between India and the U.S. and trying to find those areas of commonality in which the two countries are strategic allies. Take a listen. And as democracies, we can better tap into the full talent of all of our people and attract investments as true and trusted partners as leading nations, with our great greatest export being the power of our example. Equity under the law, freedom of expression, religious pluralism, and diversity of our people. These core principles have endured and evolved even as they have faced challenges throughout each of our nation's histories and will fuel our strength, depth, and future. And we're just waiting for that joint press conference to get underway. It was pushed back about 30 minutes or so. We're expecting to hear not only from the uh, Indian Prime Minister Modi, but also from President Biden and uh, an opportunity for members of the press to actually ask both the Prime Minister and the President questions during that joint presser. Of course, they're also headed uh, up to Capitol Hill later today when the Prime Minister of India is expected to give that joint address before a joint session of Congress today at 4 p.m. Eastern. So essentially you're saying that the Prime Minister is going to be addressing a joint session of Congress. What can we expect here, Nate? Well, it's going to be that message of unity, the one that he has projected so far and that President Biden has projected so far. He gave what sounds like a little bit of a preview of his remarks to Congress later today at the official state of visit arrival ceremony earlier today. Take a listen. The societies and institutions of both India and the U.S. are based on democratic values. The constitutions of both countries begin with the following three words. We, the people, as President Biden just mentioned. Both of our countries take pride in their diversity. Both of us believe in the fundamental principle of in the interest of all for the welfare of all. But when Prime Minister Modi comes to Capitol Hill later today, it won't be without some controversy. Uh, 75 members of Congress signed a letter to President Biden urging him to bring up certain issues uh, that they view with the U.S.'s relationship with Prime Minister Modi. I want to read an excerpt of that now. They say, quote, We respectfully request that in addition to the many areas of shared interest between India and the U.S., you also raise with Prime Minister Modi areas of concern. Later in that letter, they list the areas of concern, including freedom of the press, freedom of religion, and some political freedoms that they view as being um, uh, 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 potential areas of issues uh, with the current Indian regime. It's also worth noting there's a number of members of Congress, including Representative Rashida Tlaib, who said that they're going to sit this one out. They're going to uh, respectfully boycott the Prime Minister's joint uh, session of Congress. Uh, Representative Tlaib tweeting, quote, It's shameful that Modi has been given a platform in our nation's capital, has long history of his long history of human rights abuses, anti-democratic actions targeting Muslims and religious minorities, and censoring journalists is unacceptable. I will be boycotting Modi's joint address to Congress. Now, it is not just Talib who will be boycotting. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York and Representative Ilhan Omar will also be sitting this one out today. So certainly a moment of some slightly heightened tensions on Capitol Hill, though you heard there President Biden trying to underscore the similarities between the U.S. and India. That, of course, is a, joint, a big message uh, that is kind of uh, 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 on the forefront of this uh, trip. All right. And we, of course, are standing by for that joint press conference, which is slated to begin soon. Nate Reed on Capitol Hill will be circling back with you. Nate, thank you so much. So in other news at this hour, federal authorities holding two days of hearings on the toxic train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, that took place back in February. And months later, many people who live in that area still worried about their health. The National Transportation Safety Board examining the emergency response and the cause of the derailment, warning systems, and the condition of tanker cars on that train as well. East Palestine's fire chief spoke about communications problems, including no central 911 center in the area. The agency releasing nearly 5,000 pages of those records today. This Saturday marks one year since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, we're going to take a closer look at the changes that were made across the country and the action that lawmakers are taking right now. Plus, expectant mothers in rural areas traveling miles to see their OBGYNs. Now a mom is sharing how this complicated journey 
has marked her journey to motherhood. And don't forget that you can count on Scripps News for all of your headlines throughout the primetime hours as well, beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern. One year since the end of Roe versus Wade. I fought for the right to abortion prior to Roe v. Wade. It is upsetting because abortion is upsetting. A Scripps News special report looks at what's changed. What exactly does it mean to have the life of the mother at risk? And what's next? It may feel hopeless, but resistance always matters. Abortion in America, Friday night at 8, 7 central on Scripps News. Are you ready for a fresh new bath or shower? Well, now is the best time with 50% off installation and no interest and no payments for one year. Hi, I'm Christina, and it's time to flip your old worn out bath or shower with Jacuzzi Bath Remodel today. Everyone knows the Jacuzzi brand. They're the most trusted name in water for over 60 years. But did you know they can install a gorgeous bath or shower that feels incredible in as little as one day? It's no stress and no mess with a lifetime warranty. Now let's talk beauty. You deserve to start and end your day in a beautiful space that feels great and is custom designed just for you. So call or go online now to see the Christina preferred designs like Canyon, Farm, and Urban. Now that's the total bathroom beauty that I love at a price you can afford. And how about safety? Like an ultra low profile, easy entry shower complete with grab bars and a custom design seat. You deserve safety and peace of mind without sacrificing style. Because with all the worries in daily life, taking a shower shouldn't be one of them. Every time I stepped over my old tub, I worried I might fall. I don't have those fears anymore. Jacuzzi bath remodel gave me a gorgeous shower that's safe too. I've been trying to get him to remodel that bath for years. I called and they didn't just one day. And at a price we could afford. With one call to Jacuzzi Bath Remodel, you can effortlessly transform that old, ugly eyesore into the stunning bath or shower of your dreams that you'll love for years to come. Call or go online now to jacuzzibathremodel.com to get 50% off installation. Plus, ask how you may qualify for no interest and no payments for 12 months. And when you call right now, we'll give you our complete safety upgrade for free. Go to jacuzzibathremodel.com or call 800-218-1279. That's 800-218-1279. Call now. At Omaha Steaks, we do burgers differently. We take a premium aged steak like this and turn it into a pure ground burger like this. So this is actually a ribeye. This is a New York strip, top sirloin, beef brisket, and this, this is a filet mignon. For a limited time, our Burger Perfection flight comes with 20 big, juicy burgers, all for just $79.99, plus free shipping. Get it today at omahasteaks.com slash TV. This is Burger Perfection, guaranteed. Sure, you'll teach her how to drive a car. Then use Greenlight to power her independence with crash detection with 911 dispatch, family location sharing, and emergency SOS alerts. Invest in your best investment with Greenlight. Saturday marks one year since the monumental Supreme Court ruling that overturned Roe v. Wade. And since the Dobbs decision, there have been sweeping changes to abortion access in several states. And now about 25 million women live in states where laws are making it harder to get an abortion. Democrats on Capitol Hill have spoken out on the detrimental impact this ruling has had over the past year. Congressional correspondent Stephanie Liebergen joins us now live from Capitol Hill. So, Stephanie, what are Democrats doing on this one-year anniversary since Roe was overturned? Hey, Veronica, good afternoon. Well, Democrats in Congress and the White House really trying to draw attention to the issue of abortion access and reproductive health care in the days leading up to that one-year mark coming up this weekend on the Dobbs uh, decision from the, the Supreme Court. So, Senate Democrats just yesterday 
uh, uh, the afternoon yesterday on the Senate floor trying to move a package of bills, a handful of bills, not necessarily fully protecting abortion access, not the Women's Health Protection Act that Democrats have tried to move before, but smaller, more focused pieces of legislation that Senate Democrats are calling common sense. Among those bills they tried to move yesterday um, to protect the right to travel for reproductive health care, to protect access to contraception, to ensure that doc doctors can provide um, health care that is legal in their state to out of state patients and also a bill to protect health information and health care data from being shared or sold. All of those bills blocked by Republicans in the Democrats effort to kind of bring those force those to a floor and get a vote on those pieces of legislation. So Senate Democratic women um, in a press conference yesterday say really the past year has shown that everything they were worried about when the Dobbs decision came down. Um, was overturned when Roe was overturned last year that they were right to be concerned. Take a listen. Everything we said would happen when I thought back to the events that we did together a year ago has happened. It is a patchwork of laws across this country. You have doctors leaving certain states uh, because either they're going to be prosecuted or they're going to get in trouble or most likely they're not going to be able to give the kind of health care that they believe they should give. Democrats being really consistent in the House and the Senate and the White House saying they are not going to give up the fight to protect access to abortion and to reproductive health care. Veronica. All right. So we know how lawmakers on the Hill are feeling about it right now. And it has been one year. Stephanie, what are Americans saying? How are Americans feeling about this ruling now? Well, some recent polling has come out that shows that support for access to abortion remains high among Americans. There was a recent Gallup poll that said a record high 69% of Americans say abortion should generally be legal in the first three months of a pregnancy. Just 13% said abortion should be illegal in all circumstances. And keep in mind, there's a number of states that have fully banned abortion procedures. A Pew poll, similar results. 62% said abortion should be legal in most or all cases. So abortion still really something that the American people support. Of course, it's a very nuanced uh, issue. There's a lot of um, elements on where exactly to draw the line to abortion access. But recent, uh, recent elections have continued to show that abortion is something that will also motivate voters at the polls. The Wisconsin Supreme Court election earlier this spring showed that abortion is a motivating factor um, for Democrats. And then also the Virginia primaries earlier this week, there were some uh, incumbent Democrats in Virginia state legislature who were pro-life and they lost in the primaries to um, uh, uh, other uh, candidates who supported wider access to abortion. So really serving these state primaries, serving as a test ground for strategies for Democrats that they could use in 2024 because Democrats have made it very clear they plan to keep abortion access on as a front issue going into 2024, not only for the presidential election, but also for some really key Senate seats that are going to be up this next year. All right, Stephanie Librian, live for us on Capitol Hill. Stephanie, always appreciate it. Thank you. A uh, new report out is revealing that fewer than half of America's rural hospitals have a maternity board. In eight states, including Nevada, Florida, and Oklahoma, that number drops to fewer than a third. Scripps' national correspondent Matt Pearl spent time with an expectant mother in Pahrump, Nevada, who is driving an hour each way every time she has an appointment with her OBGYN. And it's a drive that she's going to have to make again when she goes into labor. The drive from Pahrump, Nevada to Las Vegas is one hour of visual splendor. There's no reason to rush unless you're about to be is your vision blur too? A mom. No, not so much. Jonna okay. Jackson lives in Pahrump. I haven't been feeling good. She's in her third trimester. And when the time comes to welcome her daughter, she'll drive that hour to Las Vegas because doing so in or near Pahrump is not an option. When you have issues and you're not feeling well, you don't have anyone out there who can really take care of you. Most don't think twice about the distance they travel to see their OB. But in the past decade, according to one report, more than 200 rural hospitals have closed their obstetrics units. Today, more than a third of America's counties qualify as maternity care deserts. A lot of the care should be able to be available. Jennifer Vanderlaan is an assistant professor at UNLV. She says we got here in part because maternity wards in smaller areas often lose money. 
It's created few options in spread out states. I think of Montana, which is huge. I think of Alaska, which has such a huge problem that women will actually be asked to fly into a city, you know, weeks before they are due to give birth. In Pahrump, no one needs to fly, but there's nowhere to give birth. And the distance in Pahrump and in the smaller towns further out forces difficult choices. Baby had to come out, they can't do it there. Jackson learned that during her first pregnancy with her now three-year-old son, Carter. Just go to the emergency room, but it's like, they can't do anything for you out there even if something was wrong. I have to come out here anyways. I get it. On this day, um, Jackson's high blood pressure means an unexpected trip. Doc says you should go to the hospital. Oh, geez, okay. sorry. No, no, that's okay. This part sucks. My husband's way out there and I gotta go to the hospital. <laughs> Rural women have to either plan ahead or go at the first sign of contractions. Very often you have other children at home, so you need to contact your mother or your sister or your friend to come and take care of those children and you have to call your ride and, and that all takes longer when everything is further away. Where problems are pointed out, solutions are often suggested. Some in the field demand private insurance offer fuller coverage. The March of Dimes has rolled out mobile health units. Vanderlaan suggests more effective use of midwives. Last one. Minutes after this appointment, Jackson heads to the hospital. Turns out she's fine. She makes the long drive back to Pahrump, and she knows the drives will keep coming, especially in that moment when she will have every reason to rush. In Pahrump, Nevada, I'm Matt Pearl. Still to come on Scripps News Live, cleanup underway after a tornado kills four people in Texas. We're going to survey the damage after this. You are a loved one between the ages of 50 to 80 years old. If you are younger than 80 years old, do you receive Social Security, Disability, or Medicare? If you answered yes, you may qualify for $30,000 in funeral insurance for only pennies a day. The average funeral costs around $11,000, and Social Security only pays $255, leaving your loved ones to pay the balance. Call now to see if you qualify for $30,000 in funeral expense coverage from Senior Legacy Life. Your rate will never increase, your benefits will never decrease, and there is no medical exam, even even if you have a pre-existing disease or illness. Don't be a financial burden to your family. Lock in your rate by completing an application over the phone right now. Will you qualify for funeral insurance up to $30,000 for only pennies a day? Find out by calling Senior Legacy Life. Call 1-800-300-5808 to speak with a licensed insurance agent. That's 1-800-300-5808. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong. 20% thicker than average and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait, you've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at Worthy.com. I don't get paid until next week. I got you. I'm Dave, and I can spot you up to 500 bucks of your future money instantly. Up to 500 bucks instantly? What else is in my future? A new couch. Only. Get up to 500 bucks instantly with Dave. Sunday nights on In Real Life. Then for the baby? Yeah. <laughs> Scripps News journalists take you off the grid. We were just a bunch of kids with a camera. Stunts have become more specialized. And to the heart of the story. When the pandemic hit, the American dream kind of changed. 
there were a lot of warning signs. They just didn't care. In real life, Sunday at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. All right, 24 minutes after the hour now, let's get you a quick check of the numbers making news on Wall Street. The Nasdaq has returned to the plus column today. A little bit of green on the board there. Uh, it does mean that investors are busy probably buying some tech stocks. But looking at the Dow right now, Dow is down about 76 points. This, of course, reflects what happened yesterday uh, on a... Uh, in Congress with Powell testifying, saying that interest rate hikes are coming yet again. We're gonna keep a close eye on the boards for you. In the meantime, California is no longer selling the most expensive gas in the country. Washington State now holds that dubious honor. AAA is saying that a gallon of gas averages $4.93 a gallon. That is seven cents higher than California, and it's $1.35 more than the national average. But there is some good news for people who are looking to buy a home. Last month's drop in U.S. home prices was the biggest annual amount in more than a decade. The National Association of Realtors says that the median home price in May was just over $396,000, and that is down 3.1% from a year ago. While sales of existing homes rose 2% from April to May, they are down 20% from last year. A new study found that 30% of America's homeless population in the meantime lives in the state of California. National correspondent James Packer takes a closer look at the findings and the barriers that communities have been facing. A third of homeless Americans live in California. A new study shedding a startling light on the state of the crisis. The disproportionate homeless population in the Golden State acting as a strain on its resources and a challenge for its leaders. But the prevalence of the problem in places like California, where the cost of living is high, but so is employment, prompts the question, why? Prior to Roosevelt and the New Deal, we did depend on neighbors, family, and volunteer organizations, church organizations. John Rosen is an economics professor at the University of New Haven in Connecticut. As the government has taken that on, a number of things have happened. One is families have become more atomized, right? They don't all live near each other. There is far less volunteerism far less um, uh, public service on the part of individuals, far less public service organizations, uh, relief societies, and so forth. Among the findings researchers at the University of California, San Francisco site, homeless respondents think financial assistance would have made the difference between being in a home and being on the street. 70% said small monthly payments, $300 to $500 a month to subsidize rent, would have helped them. More said a large one-time payment would have made the difference. And still more think a housing voucher would have prevented their homelessness. You there, living in that tent, do you think you could get an apartment if I gave you $500 a month? Of course they're going to say yes. But a low percentage of the study's respondents actually sought out homelessness prevention services. Only 36% said they got help before homelessness, but mostly from family and friends. Many said they didn't know nonprofit and government programs existed. It's knowing that we are making that difference where others are not. In San Diego, Teresa Smith started an organization originally designed to help families living in their cars. Well, maybe we can get a place where they can come together, park overnight safely, get a good night's sleep, while having services there on site to help them get out of that situation. Now, the organization Dreams for Change is helping families get their tax refunds. Knowing and hearing from them that this is gonna pay my rent for the next six months, or help me pay my rent, so I'm not gonna be homeless. It's those kinds of interventions that could really make the difference. That was National Correspondent James Packard reporting there for us. Coming up next, a Wall Street Journal reporter who's been jailed in Russia for 12 weeks, losing another bid for his freedom. We'll have the details straight ahead when Scripps News Live comes back. But first. Give us a call on our Scripps News viewer hotline toll free. That number is on your screen. It's one 4 scripts You can share your comments and your story ideas. We'll be right back. There's a new victim of identity theft every three seconds. 
and checking your credit score or bank statements may not be enough to alert you. That's because identity threats appear in more places than you realize. Identity thieves can use your information to open loans, transfer home titles, even commit crimes. Someone stole my information and tried to buy a car in my name. LifeLock monitors for threats to your identity, including ones you may miss, and alerts you if there's an issue. And if you're a victim, your dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. If something happens, you have somebody fighting for you. All plans backed by LifeLock's million-dollar protection package, including reimbursement for stolen funds. I know LifeLock has me covered. LifeLock. Identity theft protection starts here. Call the number on your screen or visit LifeLock.com 25 now and use promo code 25 now to save 25% on your first year of identity theft protection. Enroll now. Confused by all the Camp Lejeune toxic water commercials? Let me answer some of your questions. Are claims filed against the U.S. Marine Corps? No. The U.S. government has set aside billions of dollars for those who have suffered. The Marine Corps will not be impacted. Will a Camp Lejeune claim affect my VA benefits? No. According to the VA, your right to VA benefits will remain intact. If you have questions about a Camp Lejeune claim, call the Driscoll firm now for a free consultation. 1-800-273-4800. Still tying your shoes? It's 2023. Hands-free shoes are the next big thing. No more hands, tying, pulling, peel crushing. And once they're on, they stay on. Don't take my word for it. They have over 13,000 five-star reviews. Free shipping, free returns, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. A style or color for every personality. Time to step up your shoe game and step into Kizik. Get 15% off today at kizik.com TV. Hey there, welcome back to Scripps News Live. Thank you so much for being with us on this Thursday. Always good to see you. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Let's get you caught up on the day's top stories right now. We're following some breaking news coming out of Boston. The U.S. Coast Guard there saying that a debris field has been spotted in the search area for a missing submersible near the Titanic wreckage. Crews have been searching for that submersible with five men on board since Sunday, and they fear that oxygen on board the vessel would have run out by this morning. Those men paying as much as $250,000 to view the Titanic wreckage. The Titanic sank off the coast of Newfoundland in 1912. We are awaiting more details coming from the U.S. Coast Guard. That's straight ahead at 3 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be taking that press conference for you. In the meantime, a Russian court has ordered Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich to remain in jail through the end of August. The 31-year-old is accused of espionage, and he watched today's proceedings inside a glass cage. Gershkovich is being held at a Russian prison known for its harsh conditions. And back in the U.S., former Texas Congressman Will Hurd is saying that he is going to join the race for the Republican presidential nomination. Hurd, who also served in the CIA, is a frequent critic of former President Trump. Trump is the frontrunner among 2024 Republican candidates right now. Hurd joined South Carolina Senator Tim Scott and conservative talk show host Larry Elder as black candidates seeking the GOP nomination. Developing now cleanup underway in North Texas after the second deadly tornado outbreak in a week. This is just some of the damage that's been left behind in the town of Matador, where officials are confirming four people were killed, another 10 injured. The National Weather Service is blaming a rare, dangerous combination of weather conditions, including tornadoes, hurricane force winds and softball sized hail. In the meantime, concert goers at the famous Red Rocks Amphitheater in Colorado forced to run for shelter last night as massive chunks of hail hammered down on the venue during a Lewis Tomlinson concert. Scripps News Denver reporting seven people had to be taken to the hospital and an estimated 90 others were treated for injuries on the scene. And the threat of severe weather for Colorado and neighboring states isn't over. Today, another round of strong storms is expected to strike the Oklahoma and Texas panhandles. Scripps News meteorologist Scott Withers has the latest on the storm track for us. A late night tornado caused widespread damage in a small Texas town. Rescue efforts are ongoing for people possibly trapped by debris. That twister devastated the town of Matador was one of three that roared through the Texas panhandle. 
National Weather Service right there confirms the tornado hit that small town. Just 600 people. This is outside of Lubbock. City officials say a large part of the community just gone. At least four people were killed. The storm system also dropped softball sized hail and packed 100 mile per hour wind gust. Powerful storm. Listen to that hitting during a live Louis Tomlinson concert. This is at the outdoor amphitheater near Denver. The heavy rains causing flash flooding inside the amphitheater. The water gushing. You can see it right down the stairs there. Concert goers. They had to run for safety. Watch this. Seven people were injured as they were rushing out. They had to be taken to the hospital. Another 90 were injured, including broken bones and cuts. And it wasn't just the rain. The storm pelted people with ping pong ball sized hail. Now on the national satellite, you can see here's that system right there. That's what dropped those tornadoes in the panhandle of Texas. Now that's moving towards central and eastern Texas and then going down towards the Houston area. And we got more strong storms today all along up and down the east coast, moving from basically Atlanta all the way up through the mid Atlantic and another powerful system out here in Colorado, just east of Denver. We've got some flash flood warnings and watches there going all the way over into Kansas. And that's where we see our severe weather alerts for today. Strong storms expected from the Wyoming area down through eastern Colorado and into the three corners. That's New Mexico and you can see there the Oklahoma and Texas panhandles. The excessive heat warnings not as bad today. That's good news in Texas, mostly focused around Corpus Christi west of the Rio Grande. Now the rest of the state though is still under those heat advisories in the orange and in the upper Midwest we got air quality issues again. The heat that some of that Canadian smoke ground ozone problems areas up there. It looks like those storms across the high plains could spin up a few tornadoes and even more damage damaging hail today. Artificial intelligence is impacting many of our day to day lives and now the FBI is sounding the alarm on AI's use in online sex crimes. The agency issuing a bulletin warning that more people are coming forward to report that they are being extorted with sexually explicit images. But these are images that have been realistically rendered from innocent photos using AI technology. In the meantime, lawmakers in Washington have been hearing testimony this week about the possible need for laws governing artificial intelligence. Deputy Political Director Joe St. George takes a closer look at whether Congress might get anything done. When you think of artificial intelligence, what comes to mind? Is it a sci-fi movie from the 1980s or is it something a bit more serious that could potentially cost you your job or impact your child's education. One thing is clear, lawmakers here in Washington are starting to debate artificial intelligence a bit more with possible changes happening this summer. We'll see more technological change in the next 10 years than we've seen in the last 50 years. President Biden discussing the need for more debate on AI Tuesday in California. AI is unlike anything Congress has dealt with before. And Senator Chuck Schumer, who leads Democrats in the Senate, detailed Wednesday how he wants Congress to dive into this issue this summer. Schumer wants at least nine congressional panels formed to discuss ways of preventing privacy losses and job losses. Already, tech giants Microsoft and Google have called on the federal government to speed up the conversation around new regulation and laws. One idea on Capitol Hill is to create a cabinet-level task force to examine the potential consequences of AI. The White House is working to implement an AI Bill of Rights that would mandate Americans know when AI is being used on them, giving Americans the right to have a human interaction, too, if they wish. We don't know what happens next, um, but we know it will. Tom Wheeler is a fellow at the Brookings Institution and is a previous chairman of the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC. Wheeler says more regulation is an easy phrase to say. It's much harder to implement. Generally, companies may say they want regulation, but back off if their business models impacted. Now we get to the discussion of, okay, what's appropriate regulation? How do you put it in place? One example of what some fear is, take for instance a dog riding a skateboard. Yes, a silly concept, but for years in order to get that image, a graphic designer would need to be hired to build it. Perhaps it would take a day or two to even create it. AI, though, allows you to just type up the idea and, like magic, it's there. Yes, that makes life easier, but it could also put that graphic designer out of work. Whether or not Congress can address AI in a meaningful bipartisan way this year is very much to be determined. Bipartisan interest doesn't always mean new laws. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Well, June is Internet Safety Month, and of course it comes with a warning. It's important to stay knowledgeable about new technology and schemes designed to rip you off. Jenna Ray with Scripps News in Milwaukee spoke with a cybersecurity expert about how you can better protect your personal information online. 
this actually happened to me about a week ago. Brian Sevener got this text message saying his card was used to buy a MacBook Pro with a number to call if it wasn't a real purchase. I did Google the phone number that they asked me to call and it didn't come up as an Amazon number. And I, I actually reached out to Amazon. Turns out it was a phishing text, something Sevener, a cybersecurity expert, says is more prevalent now than ever before. He says criminals are after two things. A cyber criminal is anybody trying to get information or get access to your systems. Uh, phishing attempts really to get access to your personally identifiable information, social security, emails, passwords. Phishing attempts can come in the form of a text message like this one from a provider you use like your bank or Amazon. It can also be an email like this one using another company's logos. Or it could be a phone call, all in hopes of taking advantage of you quickly to get your personal information. And if this happens to you, I think you should question every link that you get. Go and verify it with the company. If you work with a bank, contact your bank and ask if this actually is a legitimate message from them. To verify, don't use information in the message sent to your device. Go to the business's website and find contact information there. If you do fall victim to a phishing attack, don't panic. Check your bank accounts regularly. Change your passwords. Um, a good preventative measure is to make sure that you have different passwords for your logins. Having several passwords can be overwhelming, but experts recommend using an app like Keeper Password Manager. That way, your passwords and accounts are secure. I'm consumer investigator Jenna Ray. Congressman Adam Schiff, now the 25th House lawmaker to be censured. It comes after Republicans passed the resolution along party lines yesterday. The GOP accusing Schiff of abusing his power by saying there was evidence of collusion between then-President Trump and Russia in the 2016 election. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is struggling to read the censure resolution as Democrats were shouting him down. On this vote, the A's are 213 and the nays are 209. With six answering present, the resolution adopted. Without objection, the motion to consider is relayed on the table. House will be in order. Now, Schiff was one of the most outspoken critics of former President Trump. He was also the lead prosecutor in Trump's first impeachment trial. The California Democrat doesn't regret his actions. He's calling the censure, quote, a badge of honor. Well, look, it's a badge of honor. As Roosevelt said in his time, sometimes you can judge a person by the enemies they make. Uh, and this was a MAGA resolution uh, that Donald Trump threatened if any Republican voted against, as many had last week, uh, that they would be uh, subject to a primary challenge. Uh, so this is basically Trump and MAGA world going after someone they think is effective in standing up to them. A censure is less severe than an expulsion, and it serves as a formal disapproval of a lawmaker's conduct. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, we want to get you live to Washington, where President Biden and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi are speaking right now at the White House. Uh, this, of course, is a historic visit coming from Prime Minister Modi uh, from one of the most populous countries in the world, the country of India. That press conference now getting underway. You see the president there just about to make his remarks. Let's go ahead and take a listen right here. Thoroughly bipartisan support that exists all across the United States for the friendship and partnership between the United States that the, they're anxiously waiting to hear you up on Capitol Hill. A partnership that is among the most consequential in the world, that is stronger, closer, and more dynamic than any time in history. Mr. Prime Minister, we've met many times over the past few years, most recently in Hiroshima at the G7 summit, and each time I was struck by our ability to find new areas of cooperation. Together, we're unlocking the shared future of what I believe to be unlimited potential. And with this visit, we're demonstrating once more how India and the United States are collaborating on nearly every human endeavor and delivering progress across the board. For from designing new ways to diagnose and treat illnesses like cancer and diabetes to collaborating on human spaceflight including sending an Indian astronaut to the International Space Station in 2024, to accelerating the global clean energy transition and tackling climate, the climate crisis we face. 
to harnessing our shared expertise on critical and emerging technologies like quantum computing and artificial intelligence, to ensuring they are not used as tools of misinformation and oppression. And we are doubling down on our cooperation to secure our semiconductor, our semiconductor supply chains, advancing open RAN telecommunications networks, and growing our major defense partnership with the more joint exercises, more cooperation between our defense industries, and more consultation and coordination across all domains. Our economic relationship is booming. Trade between our countries has almost doubled over the past decade to more than $191 billion, supporting tens of thousands of good jobs in both India and the United States. Add to that, one million American jobs across 44 states will be supported by the purchase of more than 200, more than 200 American-made Boeing aircraft by that Air India is announcing earlier this year. And with this visit, Indian firms are announcing more than $2 billion, more than $2 billion in new investments in manufacturing, solar in, in Colorado, steel in Ohio, and optic fiber in South Carolina, and much more. Further proof that America's manufacturing is back. We're expanding educational exchanges for our students, building on the record 125,000 student visas for Indians to study in the United States we issued last year, and opening new consulates that's going to make it easier for our people to travel, work, and collaborate together. On the issues that matter most and that will define the future, our nations look to one another, including on critical regional and global issues. And today, we also talked about our shared efforts to mitigate the humanitarian tragedies unleashed by Russia's brutal war in Ukraine and to defend the core principles of the U.N. Charter's sovereignty and territorial integrity. We discussed our work through the Quad and how India and the United States, together with Australia and Japan, can ensure the vital Indo-Pacific region remains free, open, prosperous, and secure. Through our new I2 YouTube ground grouping with Israel and the UAE, we're building regional connections to the Middle East and spurring science-based solutions and the global challenges like food security and clean energy. And this year, under India's leadership of the G20, we're putting sustainable development at the center of the agenda. We're de delivering meaningful action on low- and middle-income nations including multilateral development bank reform, debt relief, and building resilient and equitable health systems. The bottom line is simple. We want people everywhere to have the opportunity to live in dignity. And uh, let me be close with this. Indians and Americans are both peoples who innovate and create, turn obstacles into opportunities, who find strength in community and family and who cherish freedom and celebrate the democratic values of universal human rights, which face challenges around the world and, each, and in each of our countries, but which remain so vital to the success of each of our nations. Press freedom, religious freedom, tolerance, diversity. India now has the most populous country, is now the most populous country in the world. It's a democracy. We understand that it is, has, it, it, it is the brilliance and the backbone of our people, as diverse in, in talents and traditions that make us strong as a nation. It's democracies that do that. We see that so clearly here in the United States, where a vibrant Indian American community of more than four million strong contributes every single day to the writing of the future of our nation. Indian Americans of every background and faith, representing the full diversity of India, are pursuing their American dream while maintaining deep connections for their Indian heritage and families. That, that makes us all stronger. That is the cornerstone of this essential partnership between India and the United States. And that is why I know the friendship between our nations is only going to grow as we face the future together. Mr. Prime Minister, the floor is yours.
Your Excellency, Your Excellency President, Biden, President Biden, delegates of both countries, friends from the media, Namaskar. First of all, I thank uh, President Biden for his warm words and for his positive views on India-America relations. Friends, today is a day that has special importance in the history of India-America relations. Our discussions today and the important decisions we have taken have added a new chapter to our comprehensive and a global strategic partnership. They have given it a new direction and a new energy. Friends, a trade and investment partnership between India and America is important not only for our two countries, but for the global economy as well. Today, America is India's biggest trade partner. We have decided to resolve long pending trade related issues and make a new beginning. The initiative for critical and emerging technologies, ISET, has emerged as an important framework for our technical cooperation by increasing our cooperation in fields such as artificial intelligence, semiconductors, space, quantum, and telecom. We are creating a strong and futuristic partnership. The decision taken by American companies such as Micron, Google, and Applied Materials to invest in India symbolizes this futuristic partnership. During this journey, I also had the opportunity to meet some other American CEOs. And in my discussions with them, I could feel their enthusiasm and their positive views about India. We both agree that to make our strategic technology partnership meaningful, it is very important that governments, businesses, and academic institutions come together in order to implement India and America's shared vision on clean energy transition, we have taken several important initiatives. These cover areas such as green hydrogen, wind, energy, uh, battery storage, and carbon capture. We have also decided that in the midst of global uncertainties, India and America will, as trusted partners, create reliable, secure, and resilient global supply chains and value chains as well. The close defense cooperation between India and America symbolizes a mutual trust and shared strategic priorities. Moving away from the old uh, buyer-seller relationship we had earlier, we have transitioned today to a relationship involving transfer of technology, co-development, and co-production. The decision taken by General Electric to uh, manufacture engines in India through transfer of technology is a landmark agreement. This also opens up new job opportunities in both countries. This will give our defense cooperation a new character in the times to come. The defense industries and startups of both countries are 
important partners in this cooperation. Bringing them together is the key objective of our defense industrial roadmap. In the area of space science and technologies, we have had long-standing cooperation. Accord. By uh, taking the decision to join the Artemis Accords, we have taken a big leap forward in our space cooperation. In fact, in short, for India and America partnership, even the, even the sky is not the limit. Friends, the most important pillar of our relations is our people-to-people -people ties. More than 4 million people of Indian origin today make significant contribution to the progress of America. In fact, just this morning, the large number of Indians that gathered at the White House demonstrates that uh,